Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. A vigorously shaking airplane is definitely a bad sign. Although flying extremely close to the ground on a shaking airplane is life-threatening, pilots execute this brave maneuver for a specific reason. Aircraft of all kinds perform low flights in various situations. Especially bombers fly at low altitudes to circumvent enemy radars in radar-guided airspaces. Unlike usual flying, a low pass could introduce more trouble for pilots as the ride is bumpy. In the meantime, seeing ground a few hundred feet below the aircraft could make anyone ask for heaven's help. The air close to the ground tends to change its speed and direction more often with the irregularities of the Earth. An aircraft flying through this rough air experiences extreme turbulence that could slam it on the ground if it does not react in seconds. B-1B Lancer is a bomber meant to fight under all conditions, day and night, at high altitudes or close to the ground. The bomber was designed with low altitude terrain following capability that allowed the bomber to fly as low as 200 feet to the ground at a maximum speed of Mach 0.85. A high-speed, low-level flight induces more stress on the airframe due to strong air turbulence. Due to the relatively larger size of the B-1 Lancer, turbulence poses more effect on the airframe, resulting in heavy vibrations. To tackle vibrations, engineers came up with canard vanes fitted to the forward fuselage. These vanes could dampen severe vibrations and are automatically controlled via the Structural Mode Control System, SMCS, without any pilot's input. The system kicks in with the retraction of the nose landing gear. These two vanes are canted 30 degrees down and respond to lateral and vertical accelerations to dampen the pitch and yaw movements of the aircraft. Apart from the canard vanes, the other distinctive feature of the bomber is its variable geometry wing. Pilots use aft swept wing settings for supersonic and higher subsonic flights, including low altitude, high speed flights. With the enhancement of aircraft detection using radar, the oldest bomber in the U.S. fleet, the B-52, became a big and bold target on enemy radar screens. Even though the bomber was not initially designed for low-altitude flying, it was able to remain undetected when flown at low altitudes. Early variants of the B-52 bomber used a terrain avoidance radar that guided the pilots through the low pass. With more advanced electronic countermeasure systems built into the newer variants, the bomber flew mission sorties flying through any altitude. During Operation Enduring Freedom, B-52 bombers loitered above the mission theater 
and flew low passes, providing close air support for the ground troops. The precision guided munitions carried by the bomber leave no errors in hitting enemy targets on the ground. The sniper targeting pod of the bomber offers long-range target detection and engagement during the day and under all weather conditions. While the B-1Bs and B-52s fly low passes to engage with the enemy, there is a set of fighter jets taking the risk of flying low to entertain the public. Navy Blue Angels have been out there since 1946, engaging people with nail-biting low passes and tight maneuvers. Blue Angels, the U.S. Navy's flight demonstration squadron, now flies the twin-engine powerhouse F-A-18 Super Hornet. Usually, a team of six Super Hornets takes flight for the demonstration, performing delta breakouts, loop brake cross maneuvers, and fleur-de-lis maneuvers, in which all six members participate in the demonstrations. In the blink of an eye, two solo angels break from the formation while the remaining four perform an echelon role. In the meantime, those two solo fighters perform an unexpected sneak pass above the spectators, buzzing their heads. <laughs> Flying in formation is a task of its own. In the Diamond 360 maneuver, Pilots maneuver their aircraft extremely close to a level where the separation is fiercely low as 18 inches. To embellish the show, pilots can add biodegradable paraffin-based oil to the engine exhausts, creating a white trail when evaporated. The white trail aids spectators in tracing the fighters and pilots to see each other during tight maneuvers and low visibility conditions. Blue Angel pilots never break the sound barrier, even though their flying machines are capable of reaching a speed close to Mach 2. During a demonstration, 700 miles per hour would be the fastest a jet could attain. A fighter flying at this speed just 50 feet above the ground is definitely a demanding task for pilots. Additionally, Blue Angel pilots do not gear up with G-suits. As the pilots always know their next move, they can tackle blood pooling in the legs in high G-forces by contracting the muscles. Dumping G-suits endow leeway for pilots to fine-tune the control stick and flight control levers. During a high speed, low pass, or formation flying, an inadvertent input to the control stick could be the worst nightmare. To be on the safe side, all FA-18 Blue Angel fighters are fitted with an artificial feel unit to the control stick that creates 40 pounds of false feel when the stick is moved. Unlike entertaining the public, 
fighter pilots will have to execute such tight maneuvers in real combat missions as well. Flying through a canyon to circumvent enemy radars in a low-level air interdiction is the perfect example of exercising tight maneuvers. Pilots perform fast turns to remain within the cleft of the canyon to sneak below the radar. Practicing low passes, tight maneuvers, and strafing runs is nothing new for pilots. But there is one occasion where all the training and experience boil down to one point. It is none other than engaging in a dogfight with a bandit. In a dogfight, the pilot performs a set of basic flight maneuvers, BFM, to outrun the opponent and gain an advantageous position either to attack or defend. As the name implies, basic flight maneuvers are a blend of simple flight maneuvers, such as turn, roll, climb, or descent. Every aircraft could possibly perform these basic maneuvers with ease. But a pilot who has mastered his aircraft and read the enemy aircraft correctly could execute the basic maneuvers for his benefit. In addition, the pilot should possess a decent situational awareness during combat. With the advent of engines with thrust vectoring capability, dogfighting took a whole new level. In modern dogfighting or air combat maneuvering, the effectiveness of controlling the aircraft in three axes is highly decisive. Thanks to thrust vectoring, fighters became capable of taking tight maneuvers. A fighter jet, such as the Su-57, has a movable exhaust nozzle that directs thrust along pitch and yaw axes to support maneuvers. F-22 Raptor, the mainstay of super-maneuverable U.S. fighter jets, is built with 2D thrust vectoring, where the exhaust nozzle moves up and down vectoring the thrust along the pitch axis. The massive thrust delivered by the engines is used to maneuver the fighter, and it is far more effective than conventional flight control surfaces. When thrust vectoring is combined with flight controls, the fighter becomes super maneuverable even at low speeds and high angles of attack. Thanks to thrust vectoring, pilots can control the nose position of their fighters even if the wings are stalled during a high alpha maneuver. Apart from providing control at low speeds, thrust vectoring also helps pilots to maintain control effectively at supersonic speeds. During both supersonic and subsonic flights, a tight maneuver requires greater deflection of control surfaces that could introduce more trim drag and slow down the aircraft. With thrust vectoring, control surface deflections are kept to a minimum while engine thrust supports maneuvering. No matter how advanced a fighter becomes, flying low passes never gets old. 
good old bombers like B-52 and B-1B enjoy low passes. While state-of-the-art fighters like F-A-18 and F-22 are taking the art of low passes to the next level, while pilots thrive on delivering their best performance at all times. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.